Uh, we have Shilesh Chopra, Senior Director, Software Engineering from Dell. Vinay, an Enterprise Agile Coach from Pfizer. Garo Mittal, Product Leader, Intuit. Madhava Mantri, Senior Director, Cloud Engineering, ServiceNow. And to lead this panel and to facilitate this discussion, we have Padma Satyamurti from uh, Walmart Global Tech India, and she is a enterprise transformation leader. So Padma, over to you, and I'll hand it over to you to drive this conversation. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Sangeeta. Thank you, Zeno team. It's very humbling experience to be speaking in front of legends, Dr. Anand and Scott. So I take it with utmost um, uh, humility and uh, uh, I have a great uh, panel uh, uh, partners here with me, Vinaya, Shadesh, Kaurav and uh, Madhav. So happy to be talking to you all uh, and uh, thank you audience for being here with us on the mo on a mo morning here. It's not easy to take out time in the morning. So thank you very much and Zeno, of course, thank you very much. So this is Padma, I'm the Enterprise Transformation Leader at Walmart and uh, without wasting much time, I'll ask all my co-panelists to just give a quick introduction to themselves and we can kick off the panel here. So Gaurav, uh, would you start with your intro? Great. Uh, thank you, Padma, for the kind words. Uh, and very good morning to everyone from my side as well. Uh, thanks, Zeno, for inviting me to this panel discussion. Uh, uh, first, a few words, you know, to introduce myself. Uh, I'm a successful entrepreneur and a product management leader with 20 plus years of industry experience, currently working with Intuit. I have done extensive work in the product strategy, product management, customer advocacy, and the value engineering side. I'm also a coach, advisor, and recurring speaker on topics like product market fit, uh, customer acquisition and engagement, you know, lean methodology, you know, and how to build products that provide, you know, persistent differential return. I hold close to 30 patents and few of them are even as cl classified as essential uh, patents. Uh, my first brush with uh, Agile was way back in 2005 when I was working with Nokia in Finland. Uh, at that time, uh, Agile was presented as a new method of software development. Where I see Agile now and pro progressing more in future is that you know, uh, Agile is a mindset, not a methodology. And Agile mindset helps you know, in business agility, which includes both the strategic ability uh, and the operational agility. When I say strategic ability, uh, agility, I mean uh, in generating new products and services you know, and bring them to the new customers. And by operational agility, I mean, you know, making existing businesses better. Uh, and we will talk more about this, you know, in this panel discussion, uh, but happy to be here and, you know, kind of have a discussion with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Gaurav. Uh, Madhav, can I request you to go next? Madhav from ServiceNow. A wonderful, wonderful morning. And uh, thank you for in having me on this panel, Padma. Really appreciate. Uh, thanks to Zinnau for choosing a, such a wonderful topic very very close to a lot of our hearts today people that grew up as engineers like me uh, definitely take a lot of uh, uh, excitement in being part of this panel and being part of the one of the audience of uh, uh, anand's session this morning followed by scott's uh, wonderful wonderful sessions um, a little a few words about me i am a true engineer at heart I grew up as as a software engineer wrote tons of code uh, did my master's in computer science in the United States, worked in the States for a few years before moving back to India, worked for uh, several different enterprise level organizations uh, before joining uh, ServiceNow as a leader for cloud engineering and cloud automation. Uh, very recently, a little over a year, I've been part of ServiceNow now. now. Um, my my agile journey, like uh, Gaurav's was, or probably many other panelists' journey, probably started uh, two decades ago. When we were all tying with the idea of capability maturity models, repeatable processes, metrics management, and all that actually created an industry in itself, right? So people were creating careers. Like me was creating a career from an engineering writing code to becoming a project manager at one point was viewed as a bright factor for a lot of us. And then uh, we took it to the other extreme uh, when uh, it was becoming very invasive. One of the questions I saw in, from the audience also today that people were becoming too much about, too invasive about managing metrics, right? So, uh, and then Agile happened to a lot of us, uh, people like researchers like Scott and other people actually uh, invented this beautiful uh, Agile world to us. 
where it became more people focused focus more on the results interactions became more important and not the dozens of books that we were writing at one point that were quickly getting outdated right so uh, no i actually uh, were one of those people that actually ridiculed agile to a big promoter of agile today so that's that's what i am and look thank forward you. to your lovely discussion with this panel thank you babu thank you madam uh, move to shailesh chopra from dell hey everyone good morning uh, first of all uh, an absolute privilege uh, to hear anand and scott in the morning so i couldn't have started <laughs> with such a burst of energy both of them experience uh, authenticity as well as uh, sharing insights right uh, which probably you can't uh, uh, get easily in next 20 years also so thanks for setting this up you know uh, we have to share that uh, uh, i i am having uh, around 20 years uh, of experience in tech industry Seventeen uh, years in Dell Technologies, of course, uh, was part of EMC, and 2016 Dell and EMC came together, and uh, and uh, we are Dell Technologies, right? So we're building software and appliances. Uh, if people who are working on software and people who are working on appliances, they know that there are two different uh, uh, methods to release to the end customers. So processes, while we do amplify our need to improve, we use them as means, but we don't uh, really over index or over amplify. that that's the only prescribed method right so we stayed out of purist mindset and left the room on the table to improvise uh, or tailor made that so we we don't claim we are the purist if you want verses of agile from us probably we are not the right person but if you want to learn from us where we failed where we learned where we kind of succeeded uh, surely i look forward to share that experience today i'm part of dell uh, dell data management group uh, we started our journey in this group maybe a couple of years back uh, uh, it taught us uh, quite a lot of things right uh, at that point in time we were releasing products uh, in 12 to 18 months range right but agile taught us you can actually deliver value incremental meaningful in less than a quarter so we have offerings today and couldn't have if somebody would have asked me to put my money on how fast you can release a product so probably a year is a stretch uh, an aspirational question maybe 9 months to 10 months but i think agile and the methodology and the improvisation has taught us you can actually deliver a uh, smaller chunks which still holds the uh, true value for the customer so unlocking that true value in short period of time is a sense of us moving from a i won't say just waterfall but maybe hybrid model to a bit more closer tightly aligned process uh, which uh, embraces agile right and you mentioned about uh, when we were discussing about uh, a case study right i was just looking at product one but we'll talk about that later what a, what a case study pandemic has been uh, pre pandemic during pandemic and hopefully the time is quick when we say we'll talk about post pandemic but that taught us how to adapt to change what things which are not in your control how to how to be resourceful how to be uh, in present right so i consider that's a great case study if you want to reflect upon how you live uh, you, how you want to live the agile values in principle so i look forward to talking to my co panelists and learn from them and take the take those learnings back to my organization Thank you, Shilesh. Thank you for being honest on the release cycle about a one year and ten months there. So, Vinia, uh, we'll move on to your introduction here. Sure. Thanks, Padma. Uh, first off, I must mention the keynotes. Uh, both the keynotes from Anand and Scott were awesome, and it really gave us a lot of food for thought. Uh, and you saw from the chats and the questions that it was really thought provoking. So, thanks to Persistent and Zeno for pulling this event together. and thanks for having me our uh, panelists are great so i hope to learn a lot um i work with fiser as an enterprise agile coach um i started my career in the it industry in development roles and then i moved on to various delivery roles and about a decade ago 10 to 11 years ago i moved to coaching uh my coaching experience started with the theory of constraints implementation followed by large scale kanban and i'm very grateful for those roots uh, because i really learned a lot uh, through those experiences and then uh, scrum safe disciplined agile and various home grown approaches are things that i've dabbled in uh, i'm currently in fiser and we are taking a framework agnostic approach uh, in my business unit uh, which really creates a lot of room for experimentation and creativity uh, so a lot of what scott talks about in da really resonated well with uh, resonates well with this approach um the earlier panelists mentioned the pandemic very difficult to you know uh, have a talk today without mentioning the pandemic 
Uh, so I would just say that I think the pandemic uh, is a forced disruption on us, on all industries. Um, but it also presents a lot of opportunities that we should really respond to. And I'm waiting to see what, uh, you know, the panel discussion takes us to. Thanks, Padma. Thank you, Vinaya. Uh, 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 I'm the Enterprise Transformation Leader at Walmart. And Dora, we should catch up on the Nokia journey. Incidentally, my Agile journey started with Nokia as well. I was with Wipro in 2005-06. And uh, Nokia was one of our biggest customers. We were one of the biggest service providers. And Nokia was very clear, even service providers need to be Agile. That was a very holistic approach that I can recollect 15 or 18 years back, where Nokia said only we will be Agile and everybody else can be do, doing whatever they want. They never took that approach, thanks to them. I entered that space and then I never wanted to look back to any other field outside of that. So stayed back there. Been part of large transformations like Philips, uh, Cineverse, mobile technologies and uh, uh, Lowe's um, and currently with Walmart. So have domain experiences in uh, fintech, uh, retail and uh, healthcare predominantly also. One of my favorite uh, domains as well. So that's about me. And uh, this is a big responsibility. I think Zeno kind of uh, uh, played this trick. They had uh, Dr. Anand to begin with, which was wonderful presentation followed by Scott. So the, now the biggest responsibility on the shoulder for all of us is to keep the momentum going where they left off because they have covered almost everything that we wanted to speak in the first place and then also keep hold of our audience interest beyond what they have shared very interestingly that too so that's going to be a big task for all of us so i hope all of us are going to make a great justice to the time that you are investing in with us in this uh, with this with us in this so thank you for this and uh, let me move on to uh, uh, the the first uh, question that we have actually we uh, we as panelists actually have come together brainstormed a lot what we can bring to the table with you all guys so hope you enjoy these discussions with us uh, so one uh, thing that we kind of keep discussing is um, the ability for an organization to adopt Agile and uh, be, build the agility within an organization. And uh, we always uh, see the debate uh, in many forums that these two are not the same things. Uh, adopting Agile, I think uh, Dr. Anand also was talking about not just talking about the da daily stand-ups and other things. And uh, Scott gave us a much uh, holistic view of what um, agile and agility will look like. But I want to hear from our panelists. What does this? Uh, what are, what do you, what has been your experience uh, between adopting agile and building agility within an organization? So I'll start this discussion with uh, Madhava here. Uh, Madhava, coming from Service Now, what's been your experience on the two distinct or maybe similar concepts? No, absolutely. Absolutely, they're they're quite quite distinct in the sense that uh, you know, honestly, it's a fantastic question, Padma. Thanks for thanks for asking and thanks for choosing me to start this discussion. Um, I may have a little bit of an engineering bias here, but uh, technology, I think, adopted to agile uh, fairly quickly, uh, given that uh, you know it suited extremely well for the engineering organization. The the whole concept of agile suited us suited us very well. We have uh, suddenly uh, while we are producing faster, we suddenly noticed. Uh, a big chasm in in the engineering organization versus the rest of the rest of the world. When I say compl complementing organizations, the consumer organization, right? Consumers could be clients. Consumers could be testing organization. Consumers could be uh, support organizations, training organizations, and actually Scott went beyond talking about other complementing organization uh, functions in the organization like marketing, HR, etc. We suddenly started seeing a big chasm between these. So we were producing faster, we were producing uh, more frequently, and suddenly started realizing that the consumers are not geared up to um, adopt to this situation quite quite very fast. This led to uh, to to a great extent. I would like to actually quote an example of uh, dress code was becoming a big uh, big discussion, right? So uh, to a great extent. Uh, when Uncle Bob was writing a lot about what is professionalism for software engineers, software engineers' professionalism is not in what he wears, right? In in the code that he produces, to an extent that all the other functions were still saying that you need to look well uh, in when you are working in a when you are at a workplace, while engineers were not uh, all that care, caring about how they look, how their code looks is what mattered. That became a big debate, and not to distract too much. 
um, just to build agile came in very handy in building agility the culture of agility across the organization uh, in the sense that we were, there were a lot of lot more functions were getting created like devops we started building the walls between dev and ops with the new function called devops qe ops ml ops ai ops or what not right so we started creating a lot more tools to integrate functions together and hence people started noticing why they need to be i know as far talked about a lot more lot more detailed uh, use cases of why other functions are probably not as agile yet uh, but then uh, there are definitely significant effort that we made uh, as an organizational leadership to see how we can become make uh, bring in agility across the organization it was quite challenging but i think we are all we are all getting there great question thanks sir uh, mother I'll move on to Vinaya here. Vinaya coming from a coaching and a fintech world, and coaching is where the distinction of adopting agile and building agility actually surfaces a lot. So, what's been your experience, Vinaya? Yeah, I think it's a really good question, and I think uh, if we look under the hood a bit, uh, the question is also about uh, our agile practices or agility resulting in better business results, right? um first you know uh, very very clearly let me say that there is a definite correlation between agile agility and desired business results but frequently uh, in my experience what i've seen is that agility and business results um they are a little removed or separated in space and time and what i really mean by that is that we don't talk about agility in the same space uh as we talk about business results or in the same context of business results we don't do that enough we talk about agility like it's a self contained separate thing that development organizations want to do right which is just not true and when i say that they also little removed from each other in time i mean that some of the small practices or things that we introduce as a part of agile adoptions they take time to translate into real business results that can be seen that are visible um and that doesn't make them less important it just demands that transformation agents uh leaders others uh need to be much more skilled in drawing and surfacing those connections more explicitly help people see the connection between good agile approaches between agility and between great business results to so make that connection a little more explicit uh so i would just say again in summary that the definition um, you know there's a definite correlation that definitely exists so start talking about agility in the context of business results in the same platforms in the same forums with the same leaders and show the relation more explicitly between agile practices and business outcomes i think that will start mitigating you know these kinds of questions to some extent thanks pinia that's good i think uh, that was pretty uh, distinctive uh, uh, approach also that you mentioned here gaurav i will move to you product leader uh, so like i i remember what dr anand said i am a salesman at the end of the day and business is what matters i think gaurav at the end of the day is a product leader and wants to focus what we can do with the product irrespective of agile or agility right so what is your take on this question when it comes to your you are from your angle of a product leader so sure, thanks padma it's a great question um, so from product management sp- space i see agile helping us stay closer to the customer and the markets throughout the product development cycle it also helps us coming back to the problem space again and again instead of defining the problem once in the beginning and then continuously play in the solution space in order to build the solution which sometimes totally delineates us from the progressive customer needs or the market changes which will happen so agile mindset i think thus helps a finding product market fit and make better products but it also helps from the operational perspective to roll out products in quick iterations and either gener- who are either generating the value for the customer or learn to fail fast thus saving time money and effort of the organization so i fully concur with uh, you know anand uh, you know what he mentioned that with introduction of artificial intelligence software may be moving towards commoditization 
and requirements is the space which will differentiate whether you know uh, for the organizations you know how to differentiate themselves you know or kind of they go up or down in the in the in the ladder right so the good news is that the product management is already seeing the benefits of agility and is starting to understand and bring customer needs inside the organizations uh, utilizing the continuous feedback loop that's what i would say thank you gaurav uh, shilish moving on to you uh, who uh, very openly mentioned that release cycles were nothing less than a year and with a great uh, stretch maybe 10 months to talking about agile and agility what's been your experience i'll, I'll try to demystify as simple as i can right if agile is a framework ability to execute agile is agility right uh, all said big done right it's very very hard thing to implement because you're dealing with as uh, gorova saying about mindset if change is uh, if change is a constant then having an agile mindset is a great variable to have handy right so you will run into the change the kind of uh, uh, customer expectations the landscape which is changing right uh, you need to respond uh, to the changing priorities gone are the days when you say that hey take this and this is a 9 months to 12 months uh, roadmap and uh, you execute against that right you kind of look back continuously perpetually in 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 that right so while frameworks or or guiding principles are there to help you as scott and anand was mentioning and openly are mentioning but what you do at the moment right as an organization not just as a siloed engineering organization or a sales or a product organization but an organization end to end which is committed to deliver an outcome to a customer right Uh, they're going to pay for the value not for the means or the effort you have put in to execute that uh, into into what they are looking for so i think it's a it's a fine distinction in terms of uh, what the books or, or or the guidance are and what you enact that within your org dna or fabric that's where there is a differentiation between agility and agile once a very small example right if i have to quote a, an organization which is learning organization you have this scrum practices right are your people taking decisions at that scrum how many of decisions are been taken at the scrum root level are people taking that decision you created the framework you created the governance body right but if 90% of the decisions are going all the way up i think somewhere agility has to be reminded the mindset has to be questioned and challenged and it is is really very very proud moment for us that the one thing which we stayed out was that hey processes are for people Uh, people are not for the processes and we keep reminding ourselves is it working for us is it working for us is it working for us so not marrying to a gospel and then be bold to say it's not working for us a- across the organization have served us well i'm i'm definitely looking forward to hear some of the success story from co panelists that that's where the distinction is thank you shailesh this was good and i think actually it almost sets the context for our next question that we are talking about uh following a process right recently my colleague suggested a book actually it was interesting book will this make my boat go faster this is about a olympic team that was underdog which went on to win a olympic gold uh one of the best books i read in the recent times and i think that's where you what you said very relevant will this process make us more agile and build agility right asking that question so coming i'll connect the same question to our next question um so we have a lot of frameworks lot of earlier when we started gaurav uh, said about nokia we had very few options and we were really just not into so many frameworks and then suddenly there was a plethora of frameworks like right almost i was falling in love with disciplined agile when scott was explaining it because it looked, came it comes across so holistic so there is a huge uh, 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 a buffet of uh, frameworks methodologies available for us and uh, a lot of us are already building a hybrid version sangeeta brought in about the spotify model in, as part of her survey which was very interesting to hear we can even continue to debate whether spotify is a model methodology framework or just a best practice we can con- so so many available what does future look like from here um, with so much available where are we heading are we are the focus going to be more on that or uh, how is the future going to look uh, look up to us when organization want to start adopting and especially on sustaining and uh, maintaining this the momentum that we have built in how does that look like uh, maybe here i'll start with you shailesh uh, um, what is your experience since you set uh, the context for this question sure no i i i'll b- build on the mindset because we are very heavy on that if you have solved that problem that inertia because people are not resisting to change i think we need to explain them the context why this change is important what's the value out of it right 
tools are ancillaries right processes are ancillaries right it is how people are committing themselves and the commitment you cannot force on people right you need to you need to take one step at a time and we did that with workshops uh, challenging hearing them out uh, adopting something slow adopting something fast i think we talked about scott and uh, anand everybody has their own unique journey so you need to pace it up while tool technology then i think this also a spices shop which anand brought in more tools also is a problem right a problem of plenty should be solved by a level of abstraction right uh, i i think what what the what the future will hold is that yes we need not to oversell the processes but we need to tell people what's the outcome we are expecting from each of the scrum team processes and other right and i won't put uh, right uh, cart before the horse people their mindset and their action will definitely drive the pro- progress forward processes frameworks guidelines will make us more efficient and help us out right but defining what you want to achieve i think very hard for a tool or a process to dictate that to uh, any of us so that that onus lies on um, on all of us right while i also feel there will be a continuous improvement in terms of building more efficiency the spirit of agile should uh, be one which will carry forward right uh, the tools will reflect that the processes will reflect that the offerings will reflect that so i i think that uh, uh, the the anand's point on artificial intelligence or as we are calling it as augmented intelligence you cannot you cannot offload the thinking process to a tool and process if if you are looking at that i think i i have a bad news for you how thinking has to be done by the individual of course there will be data insights there is the corollaries there is the correlation there is prescriptive algorithms which will be provided by the tools and there is a fine balance with uh, that i also feel like any evolution you will have standardization coming in play uh, i think we already saw the discipline agile how nicely scott has kind of uh, uh, decomposed various things into subcategory you will see that's happening with the tool you will see the winners and the and the and the probably the lagars you will see the distilling happening and uh, i i i look forward the evolution or uh, in in true spirit of agile agile dot next version will learn from its predecessor uh, so that's where i am bullish about that we might not not all, all the answers but we know what the outcomes we are looking for and uh, we will frame the tools home grown or otherwise as we go forward uh, padma It makes perfect sense, uh, Shailesh. Uh, Vinaya, what's your take? What does future you foresee looks like for 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 rest of us? Uh, before I talk about the future, very briefly about you know, uh, since I've been doing this for the last decade or so, I would say that my experience ten years ago as a coach is significantly different from my experience today as a coach. Earlier, it was you know we used to get questions like, "Is this just a fad? Is it going to blow over?" Uh, does it really work, etc.? And now I don't face so many questions of that nature, uh, not so much resistance of that nature. I would say uh, people that I'm working with today have mostly had some agile experience because agile has been around for a really long time now. Uh, so people are familiar with the basics and popular frameworks like Scrum for sure. Uh, so my guess, and it is a guess uh, for the future. is that one agile is here to stay so you know the days of agile is dead etc are also behind us i think we've crossed that bump so agile is here to stay it is going to be table stakes going forward for any company uh i think we'll have more and more people and i'm already seeing it in leadership positions who have worked in an agile way and believe in it also at the entry level on the other end of the spectrum uh people joining the workforce won't need to be weaned off waterfall right they are uh they starting with agile so uh in addition to that i think we have a lot of technology supporting agility and it is and it will continue to be rapidly adopted um i also think we will see it spreading more rapidly to functions other than development uh, so hr finance marketing legal and other places so that there is more overall organizational agility and as the ground gets set for organizational agility and business agility uh this is my prediction for the agile community uh i think we'll see more frameworks and literature focusing on that space of organizational and business agility uh so that was uh you know my fortune telling um, attempt but honestly my hope more than my prediction my hope for the future 
is that any frameworks that come up uh, in the future will be only skeletal in nature and we we'll leave a lot of room for people to think and adapt ideas to their specific context i think that is a real service that we can look forward to thank you thanks very much over to that literature as well <laughs> thank you and you are right like more and more everybody knows agile now in fact one of the business groups i was uh, helping them interview a uh, at a, a, a design person uh, for their team uh, for the ux design team uh, about 6 six, six to 8 years experience and i was asking her uh, what do you think is the difference today we are seeing versus uh, what a waterfall was and she said sorry but i have never been in waterfall right. so the first generation of agile folks have already come into the market uh so that's there so yeah i think the future is also have to be looking different obviously given that first gen uh, agilists are already coming out who have never seen the waterfall world also right yeah. i'll i'll now next go with gaurav on the same question of uh, future looking how does future look like uh, gaurav sure uh so i will i'll start with the data point i think uh, 87% of fortune 500 companies either got acquired merged or died in last 50 years 87% and these were not small companies they were five, uh, fortune 500 companies and why i think because uh, they never achieved uh, the right product market fit before scaling or even if they did achieve product market fit but they could not you know keep the pace with respect to the changing customer needs right i'll give two examples over here uh, f- uh, c- first is nokia right they had a great product market fit and they were selling millions of devices per month our uh, customers loved nokia as a brand i remember in 2005 2006 the user research telling us that 8 out of 10 people in india having a mobile phone uh, carried a nokia with them but the customer needs evolved and uh, you know and customers wanted a more ex- ex- exquisite touch and browsing experience so nokia fo- found themselves in soft ground with respect to product market fit over here the second is basically the example being orkut so they had millions of users in india but when facebook came with their superior product market fit and utilizing the power of network effect you know they took all the you know orkut users away over here so hence you know what i would say is that it is very important to keep agile mindset and keep iterating on customer needs and the product market fit now when it comes to framework right all frameworks you know are great and have their own advantages where i see industry deriving the maximum value in future is from the principles of lean and that's why the two examples right you know which i gave you know you know are very pertinent over here how do you constantly iterate on the customer needs and the market you know requirements you know from that perspective and the reason i say is that because the lean part of agile is uh, you know is no more restricted to the software or high tech industry itself right but there are many other industries like manufacturing and supply chain you know which are you know where the lean principles are fully developed again if i get take an example over here you know of outside the software how being the lean principles are adopted is basically you know take an example of uh, toyota how they run their factories now utilizing the you know now you know famous uh, toyota production system Toyota was able to produce vehicles with higher quality as well as far more durable so the american car manufacturers couldn't compete even when they tried to you know uh, you know let's say try to adopt the well versed you know uh, the toyota methodology ultimately there was so much you know in the toyota way of doing things which extended beyond their four walls you know and you know how they sourced from their suppliers even bringing some of the you know lean principles to their suppliers you know that you know they you know it it proved out to be a great competitive barrier you know for toyota you know vis-a-vis their competitors you know and so the american you know car manufacturers you know couldn't com- you know couldn't compete and toyota basically effectively you know was able to sustain and grow their market share in you know us car market so that's what i would say that right how we can utilize the you know the agile framework the agility mindset and the agile uh, you know let's say principles in order to kind of iterate on the customer needs you know not only in the software industry but across the industries and kind of you know get benefit from there you know tr- with respect to time to market benefit and you know understanding the customer needs 
Absolutely. I mean, lean probably is going to stay forever and <laughs> never going to go away. And Toyota's examples as well. I mean, I think they also were one of the pioneers in customizing mass production, right? Everybody felt that, oh my, this is car has been literally been done to my requests, my requirements. So that they were pioneers. Shailesh, I'm going to uh, give the responsibility of summarizing this whole question. Not Shailesh, sorry, Madhav here. Madhav, I'm going to give you the responsibility of summarizing this whole uh, question of the future here with you as we end this particular question. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, thank you for the responsibility. This is a uh, great, great views from all the panelists. I think uh, it, it's agile started as a mindset, not as a defined process. Right? Like like uh, Shailesh was uh, talking about, it is a mindset shift. Once that is there, um, you know everything else is going to fit into this. Right? So uh, Vinaya was actually referring to agile is going to stay. Agile probably is going to stay here, uh, but then uh, in different forms. Right? So as as a as Agile's uh, fundamental principle is evolution. So evolution is going to take place, in my opinion. Um, I think we are all now gearing up for given what is now at hand for us working from everywhere uh, is uh, setting in India, every, every organization now. I think it is going to now take a different shape. We are all in for a new transformation. We are on the on the verge of a new new uh, Verge of a new transformation now, I would say. It's going to create another big, big industry, in my opinion, uh, Padma. We have I've seen Agile uh, itself. So when, when CMM was taking shape, we were all thinking CMM is going to stay here uh, forever, uh, given the way the principles were were, were uh, geared up to improve the industry, per se. And when Agile uh, dawned now, and we are all thinking that Agile probably is the best thing that could have happened to all of us, but then uh, now Agile's biggest fundamental principle is to bring the people uh, co-locate. So co-location is not going to be not going to exist anymore. We all know that we are all going to probably work 70% of the time remotely, or probably more than 70% of the time remotely across, across the world. So I'm sure we are all probably gearing up for uh, a big changes coming in uh, to an extent that uh, I would say a lot, lot more lot more frameworks are probably going to be will be facing us with. So I think we'll probably uh, have to wait for that time to happen and then uh, probably experiment with different what works for you the best and then adopt to it. And evolution is going to continue that. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the summary. Uh, in fact, we have a question which is almost related to what we are discussing. So I'll pick up a question from the audience here. Uh, so with frequent changes in requirements, especially in this pandemic time, and the work environments also being different. Uh, all of us, like what Mother was talking about, being um, not really co-located and other things. How and this has added on a lot of uh, uh, occupational hazards like uh, stress. Uh, work from home is not as easy as we used to dream of, right? Once upon a time, it's it's actually adding a lot of stress, anxiety, and even depression of not be meeting our fellow colleagues and people in general. So with all this coming in and a really drastically changed work environment and changing requirements from the customers, how are we expecting to complete uh, uh, these requirements? How are we expecting a closure on this requirement successfully uh, from one of our audience here? Uh, maybe, uh, Madhav, do you want to start this question uh, uh, here? What, what exactly the question, Padma? I'm sorry. How are we going to meet the customer requirements especially in this pandemic and a little bit of the post-pandemic time, uh, given that our work environments are also very stressful uh, being away from the office. Absolutely. Uh, great, great question. The, my take on that would be, and I, honestly, uh, one of the things that we have actually embraced, all of us as an industry embraced is we have become less about engineering excellence and have become more about customer experience. Right, so all of our minds have started thinking. We have people like Gaurav that is helping us with about uh, market demands, consumer demands, customer demands. Uh, so there is a we have moved on from the business analyst industry to the product management industry. Uh, working remotely now, um, we have all now taken the roles of engineers are also slowly becoming taking up those roles of product managers, thinking like a product. We are not thinking about a lot about how do we solve this problem, but why are we solving this problem? What problem am I solving? Right. So uh, I think uh, this has been now slowly being nurtured into the engineer's mindset. I think uh, one, my, one of my advices to all the budding engineers that are now uh, entering into the market are probably are also seasoned engineers is uh, stop thinking a lot about uh, how are we go, how am I going to solve the problem? That is important, but then uh, think more about what problem am I solving? 
what value is this problem if i solve this problem is going to provide to the customer right so if if that again a, a mindset shift i in my opinion uh, if all the engineers start thinking about customer experience more and more irrespective of whether you are in the inside the office or working remotely uh, that's going to significantly impact uh, how this customer uh, experience uh, work is going to uh, impact thanks madam ashilesh you you are from a uh, typically a very uh, focused uh, product company Uh, a physical product that we all used to relate to once upon a time now product the definition of product has changed what's your take on uh, meeting these type of requirements especially in this stressful time of pandemic and maybe a bit of stretching on to the post pandemic absolutely so i i think i i'll break it down into two things one is what customer is expecting and things changes and second is this remote work right uh, agile without co location was uh, antithesis right it was not agile if you are not co located you are not in a room you are not thrashing you are not idea storming you are not brainstorming i think this is where the change has happened in last 12 to 18 months right if you ask a leader right maybe 18 months before uh, can team work remotely and they call themselves as an agile right maybe people would have told okay uh, 10% of the folks would have agreed that maybe let's try it out right but 90% would have told no i, I think in your dreams right but last 12 to 14 months had actually given us a humble reflection of what a human can do once you put them into a situation right physical distances are blurring and i believe the hybrid model will continue people will work from remote 70% 80% of the time uh, what will happen is you there will be emphasis on clarity of role clarity of responsibility clarity on outcome once you provide that things the distances will be discounted so it's a new thing it just give 8 to 9 months we are still learning the trick of the trade right so uh, you were working like this for 20 years we are discussing about 20 years of agile journey and what happened in last 12 months i think we've done a very very good job by adapting to this new normal the second thing on the requirement changes good thing everybody is going through the agile transformation in their own way including our customers so they know that change can happen their customers can uh, push on and say you know what i wanted that requirement but things have changed you know uh, the situation i want the other thing right so can you can you prioritize it differently i see the customer vendor relationship is going away there is a design partners development partners requirement partners i think mother was saying that we need to change the mindset from an engineering experience to a customer ex- or a consumer experience and people are ready to invest their time our customers spending more time with us on design review wireframe review mock reviews and it's just part of the game now so if you are changing a requirement just make it very very transparent what was you supposed to deliver what is the trade off make is in make an informed choice for the customer let's not second guess what they want and what they want to trade off but if you make uh, things transparent and that's what agile advocates right uh, you groom perpetually you prioritize perpetually and you communicate pretty much on a daily basis i think you'll take the sting out of any change and you will put the meaning back into the into the loop uh, Yeah, thanks, Shilesh. Uh, Vinay, I'll move to you quickly for this. Uh, from a coaching uh, perspective, what will be your uh, coaching tip on uh, taking care of the situation? Um, so, one, I think the pandemic, of course, has been uh, a total curveball for all of us, and it's very difficult to even assess the impact that it's going to have. Um, so, I would say that very specifically to the question from the audience about requirements, I agree completely with what Shilesh said. i think if we are transparent about what we are able to do by when what is our range forecast if we are very transparent and honest about it with our customers they are our partners today they are as invested in the development uh, process as we are so i think that uh, is a great way of mitigating any surprises and second is prioritization i think anand mentioned in uh, it in his uh, keynote uh, that in agile the whole approach is that our time boxes are kind of fixed our teams are kind of stable what changes and what we negotiate on is really the work that will get done so the scope or the requirements are negotiable in uh, agile and the honesty and the transparency really helps us have this conversation with our customers more honestly so yeah thanks so uh, gaurav i'm the product leader that you are i'm going to request you to summarize this from a product leadership angle Uh, which is very very a relevant question for all of us today 
Great, thanks Padma for giving this responsibility. <laughs> uh, I think I would say that I I totally agree with what Madhav, Shailesh, Vinaya, and even what Anand referred in his you know, keynote. Uh, so uh, things are changing. I think co-location, uh, you know, for the Scrum team uh, is a thing of past. We we need to start working in a way uh, where you know it doesn't matter. You know, the person is, you know, sitting at home at office or in US or in, you know, Europe, wherever the, you know, the, your other team member is, you need to be able to still work in the same mode, uh, you know, uh, you know, with the, from, from that perspective. The other thing is I totally and hundred percent agree that, you know, we, uh, you know, as customers are our partners now, you know, the, our suppliers, you know, are our partners and we need to kind of, you know, co-create along with them and prioritization is the key right now right so obviously you know with a pandemic in place we we have more stress and we cannot you know deliver you know we are delivering more than 100 percent what is expected but you know it's very easy for people to get burned out and it is the key thing over here is to understand the customer needs properly you know sometimes you know we if we iterate you know multiple times from the customer needs we are able to understand the right uh, the uh, the prioritized customer needs in the right way and you know build the things which really matter to the customer you know and the product management has a very key role to play over here to kind of make sure that you know engineering is not stuffed with the work but they are doing the right work you know which really makes a difference you know and that is the key over here and i think uh, that that's what you know i how i would summarize the whole discussion awesome gaurav uh, and we have a lot of questions but in the interest of time i'm going to probably end this session with this one question which really doesn't mean we end the session because this is a discussion that is worth having for a couple of weeks uh, for all of us but we yeah, are in the interest of time so one last question and i'm going to request each panelist to stick to one uh, kpi so there is a question on what is the most uh, relevant uh, kpi or the okr is the probably the most buzzword today that is going to help us uh, measure the relevance of uh, agile adoption right like measure the relevance of agile in the organization so i'm going to request each panelist to stick to one uh, me metric or a one kpi that comes to your mind uh, on the fly because it's not a question we prepared for maybe i'll start with you gaurav um, on this what is that one metric you would really if you were to take just one metric what would that be for you so i would say with the keeping in mind the we are defining agile as a mindset you know uh, i would say the net promoter score you know is should be the one you know which we should keep in mind that how closely we are working with the customers how how nicely we have understood their needs you know and you know what are the prioritized ones you know which we are building uh, you know that was i would say is the key one thank you uh, vinaya uh, from your angle what would be that one metric you would focus on uh, i think net promoter score is great for sure uh, i was thinking more in terms of you know the feedback loops are so central to agility to our ability to respond to change so i would go with lead time uh, or similar metrics which will really help us see how tight our feedback loops are which should in turn help us improve our net promoter score and many other metrics awesome yeah thank you uh, madam what would be your choice of a metric uh i would vote for net promoter score as well but the net promoter score to a to a degree that is a more granular net promoter score at the engineering level as well right so the, if we can probably build a promoter score across the functions within the organization uh, that will be a fantastic metric to have because the organizations are becoming more and more integrated uh, that would I be one measure that. i would i would think uh, both are having a centralized net promoter score and a decentralized at at, at each level i right. think that's brilliant Shailesh, it's not easy to go last when people have already answered this. Question. I thought you will, you will ask me to summarize this question. It's a nice one for me. Yeah, I will uh, ask you to take a look on this. No, I, I think uh, the, the default is outcome based, so it's net promoter score. But I'll do two net promoter score. One is uh, customer, which will tell you how product is behaving, and one is employee net promoter score. How people are feeling about this change, right? Are they feeling more empowered? Are they taking decisions? Have they autonomy? Have they cross skill? I think both are both are net promoter scores, but don't over index on one side as is a fine balance we need to take team along we need to take customer along so awesome point outstanding yeah thank you shailesh thanks for this summary so in the interest of time i'm just going to thank everybody uh, without uh, naming because that will take a long list 
So thank you everybody for being with us, and I'll hand it over to the Zinov Events uh, to take over from here and uh, help us close the event.